This is the New York State's Department of Children and Family Services website. Rudolph says this is the place where parents can check to see if a provider has any current complaints or violations against it. Some of those violations can be very minor and some of them are not so minor and it's really important for parents to know what those violations are. The Child Care Council of Suffolk investigates complaints against home care providers in Suffolk County. Sometimes it's from a neighbor, sometimes it's from, you know, a parent uh, who says that, that they think that this home is over capacity. And Wallerstein says once a complaint is received by the agency, they'll begin an investigation. We will go out on that complaint and do surveillance, actually, to see whether, in fact, this is happening. But complaints aren't the only reason for inspections. Brian Lahiff, who used to investigate complaints for the state and is now with the Child Care Council of Suffolk, says daycare inspections are also done during the initial registration process. The agency checks to see if there's enough space for children, a place for food to be served, and that the home has more than one exit. They also want to see other safety measures in place, including doors that are baby-proofed and covers on electrical outlets. Uh, so we'll look at the general layout of the interior of the home as well as the exterior. Is the yard fenced in? Uh, is there a body of water? If so, is that fenced in? And it's not just the layout of the home being investigated, it's also the people inside. Anyone over 18 is going to be fingerprinted. Anyone over 18 is also going to have to complete a state central register clearance. That's a look into child uh, abuse allegations. So if there is a complaint and it's substantiated, what happens? Well, Lahif says it could mean the provider will face fines or suspension. And there's one sure thing that will result in a suspension, denial of access to the home. If you don't let us in and we hear children, uh, we're going to probably suspend you. But even with all of these state regulations in place, it still doesn't ensure your child's safety. It's going to happen. Children are going to get hurt. According to Wallerstein, New York State and the Child Care Council are currently moving toward improving the rating system they use for child care providers. Which will be like a Zagat restaurant rating, mm -hmm. you know, so parents will have more to go on. Wallerstein says the improvements will help ensure quality of care, which she says is critical to the well-being of children. Currently, infant care at child care centers in Nassau County averages about $235 a week, and in Suffolk County it's anywhere between $250 to $300 a week. Here at the Diane Lindner Goldberg Child Care Institute, Tuda says almost 80 percent of the program's budget goes to paying salaries. Not because staff members receive high pay, but because so many staff members are needed to care for the children who come here. So Wallerstein says it's difficult for daycare providers to find and keep quality personnel when the average salary is less than $25,000 a year. Because it's a low-paying job, we're not attracting the kinds of skilled people that we need, that we know what young children need. And not having the right staff can lead to trouble. Reports of dangerous incidents at child care programs have been highlighted in the news recently. Catherine Smith, the operator of the Just-in-Time Daycare Center of Huntington, was arrested after a police raid uncovered a collection of loaded weapons in the basement and attic of her home, the same home where she ran her child care program. And in Hicksville, the state closed down an unlicensed toddler program at the Carousel Day School after two-year-old Olivia Responde choked to death on a carrot she found in a teacher's bag. Tuda says Olivia's death was just devastating. It was a tragedy. The entire child care field, um, I, I think, was, was totally upset because you think you know, that this can't happen in any program, and, and it really can happen anywhere. And in Ronkonkoma, Child Protective Services investigated a complaint that a worker at the Tudor Time Daycare Center tied a two-year-old girl to a chair. Meanwhile, Sherry says she's so confident in the staff caring for Eli, she doesn't need to worry about safety. I'm able to go to work every day knowing that he's safe and loved and cared for. But even though Sherry says she knows Eli's safe, she works close enough to be able to visit him during her lunch break a few times a week and calls in to check up on him at least once a day.
you know, I'm thinking about him and I, you know, need an Eli fix. And Sherry's concern over Eli's daycare began even before he was born. She says she began searching for a daycare provider when she was still only three months pregnant. If you want to find out more information on how to find the right daycare provider for your child, you're encouraged to contact the Child Care Council in your area. I'm Denise Harlick. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Have a good evening. Flower blooms that grow up all too.